Say what you want about the dude, but there's one thing that's undeniable at this point. He's a bad man. Propelling the Packers to the best record in the NFL, Aaron Rodgers is currently having one of the best stretches of his entire career. The three-time and current reigning MVP has gone berserk over his last six games, posting a passer rating of 123.5, with the ridiculous ratio of 18 touchdowns to zero interceptions. I mean, damn! Rodgers has been so dang accurate, in fact, that he has just one interception over his last 384 pass attempts. Y'all heard that correctly? I said 384! After being attached to the hip of Mike McCarthy for the majority of his career, he's finally partnered with a play caller who knows how to get the best out of him as an elite quarterback. Rodgers pairs his precision lasers on easy reads with absurd defense-breaking throws that leave you questioning reality. It's like he's using an infinity stone to bend the game to his will. LeFleur has brought a level of flow and cohesiveness to the offense that was missing during the end of the McCarthy era. The play calling has been brilliant from both a play design and sequencing standpoint, generating easy, defined throws for Rodgers, getting him in rhythm and ahead of the count. LeFleur loves to use motion, here bringing Dugara across the formation during the snap, and using Adams' release to get him free in the flat. The corner bails to cover any deep shot, and Adams gets a perfect pick on Roquan Smith, creating an easy throw for his quarterback. Rodgers spins it perfectly, allowing his tight end to make a run after the catch. They are big proponents of the flood concept too, capitalizing off defense's commitment to their strong running game. Here, they bring MVS in motion left, faking the outside zone to AJ Dillon, and bootlegging back right. Adams is wide open in the flat, and Rodgers has an easy throw for a good chunk of change. I love how they use Adams as the flat receiver in these boot plays. Too many teams use a lumbering tight end who will get you just a handful of yards. Adams can get you the first. Here's more great use of motion to open up a throwing window. With two backs flanking 12, the Packers are going to go heavy play action. On the snap, Aaron Jones will swing out left and Rodgers will fake the handoff right to AJ Dillon. Jones' swing pulls Eric Kendricks a step his way and the play action to Dillon pulls Blake Lynch to the near side, opening up the window for Rodgers to find Lazar on the dig. A staple of the offense is this RPO with a backside flat screen built in for Devontae. Tyler Davis motions across the formation to form a trip side, and it's a simple counting game for Rodgers. The Ravens have seven in the box versus the Packers' six blockers, but only three defending the screen so Rodgers chooses Adams over Aaron Jones, firing the ball to the perfect spot to create maximum yards after the catch, allowing Tay to pick up another first down. It doesn't have to include motion either. Rodgers is so accurate simply spreading everybody out and allowing him to find the best matchup on slants and outs is an effective way to build rhythm. Just look how early he's throwing these. When they get down into the red zone, LaFleur always has something up his sleeve. This looks exactly like the RPO play we looked at, a potential handoff to the back with a built-in flat screen. However, after stuttering off the line as if he's squaring up his man for a block, Lazard cuts hard, crossing his man and running a slant route instead. And well, when you have the best receiver in the game, creating an ISO situation is always a great call. The Packers are in a heavy formation, motioning Lazard over the C-gap as if they are attempting a power run. The condensed formation and wide split for Adams forces the Bears to play him one-on-one -on -one or lose the numbers game in the box. And it's a simple choice route for Devontae. He's got the option to run the corner fade here, but when he sees Jalen Johnson open his hips to play this, he cuts back across his body on the slant. Rodgers and Adams are in lockstep, and the Packers put up another six. We've given him a whole video before, but Devontae Adams really is an unstoppable force making everybody's life easier. He gives LaFleur a number one to build the passing attack around, creates yards of separation when Rodgers needs an easy throw, and more importantly, his gravity opens up space for the other receivers on the team. Here, he's easily beating the best corner in the league on third down. 
Ramsey rightfully gets up close, playing him with outside shade to cut off that deadly fade combo, but makes a crucial mistake in not pressing him. Adams gives him the stutter off the line, stalling Ramsey before initiating contact himself, using the physicality to bump himself a yard free on the slant route. Rodgers delivers a dime, and Adams collects a face mask penalty and a set of ankles after the catch. Baltimore had the right idea here, doubling him down on the goal line, but Adams' cut off the hop release is so nasty, he's wide open for an easy touchdown. The synergy between Rodgers and Adams has no equals, with 12 routinely attempting outrageously tight window throws, knowing Adams will somehow make the play. If you decide to man up Adams one-on-one, -on -one, you best believe Rodgers is going to throw the fade route. Devontae creates space with his infamous hop release, and Rodgers knew where he was going as soon as he got the snap, flicking a rainbow ball down the near sideline perfectly over the shoulder into the hands of Adams. Rodgers is again presented with the opportunity of Adams one-on-one, -on -one. but just before the snap, Harrison Smith will bail to get over the top, trying to cut off the fade. Even a yard behind, this is considered open for Devontae, and Rodgers slings a beauty right over the head of the trailing corner to where only his special receiver can get it. I mean, you gotta watch this one more time, it's just absurd. And if you still doubted their chemistry, check out this bamboozling play against the Rams. The Packers are running a version of the RPO we looked at earlier with Adams, this time running a bubble screen. Rodgers pulls the ball when he sees the numbers advantage out wide, but Jalen Ramsey has positioned himself to cut off the bubble. No worries though, as Adams redirects his route inside, and Rodgers somehow knew he would, flicking the ball to Tay who rumbles for the first. We've shown some fabulously placed balls already, and Rodgers really has been inch perfect this season. This is one of the most absurd placements you'll ever see. Rodgers likes the matchup of Chris Board covering MVS on the post route, and he knows 49 won't have time to locate the ball if he releases early, throwing with both touch and velocity right over the shoulder of Board to an essentially covered Valdez Scantling. Here it is from the end zone angle. Just ridiculous. It's the touch he displays that really separates his play, able to routinely get the ball up and over backers into the intermediate depth. Here, the Packers come back to the play-action flood, but this time Rodgers pulls off an outrageous touch ball. Noticing nobody stayed with Jones after the play-action, Rodgers loops the ball back against the grain over the arms of two stretching linemen, perfectly placing it for his running back. Nothing defenses do seems to bother him. Whether forced off-platform or on the run, Mr. Covid Toe finds a way to place the ball exactly where he wants. He makes this play look routine, but it's far from it. Starting in 5 wide, Rodgers is going to get flush left and forced to improvise. Deguara does a great job on the scramble drill, converting his route to align with Rodgers' roll, and Aaron pays him back for the heads up play, throwing a bullet into a tiny window for the score. And even if you get the rush in his face, he's somehow able to contort his body and throw without a platform threading this ball through two rushers with the jump pass. Quarterbacks tend to make their money on how well they can decipher defenses, and Rodgers hasn't been phased by any defensive scheme or bluff all season. Remaining calm, Rodgers reaches into his 16-year memory bank of studying NFL defenses, recalling the correct answers to the puzzle and firing a pinpoint ball all in less than two and a half seconds. Here, the Vikings are going to attempt to create confusion by bringing seven men up to the line of scrimmage. Instead of the traditional double A-gap look Zimmer usually likes to show, here he throws a wrinkle by lining them up to one side over the A and B gap, with Harrison Smith lurking as if he's manning up the tight end, before bailing to his quarter zone and the blitz actually coming from the slot. Rodgers isn't fooled though, calmly processing the drop and knowing the weakness in the 2-4 is right in the middle firing to his best mate, Cobb. Here on a crucial fourth and short, Rodgers remains unflappable despite his first two receivers being taken away. He's initially looking at the slant-flat combo between Tay and Jones, but when the Rams jump all over this, he calmly resets, 
finding his tight end on the curl in between the zones. Aaron has always been known for his excellent ability to extend the play, making the most of each down. However, over the LaFleur era, he's got better at knowing when to just take the yards and dump it down to his backs. Swings and flats have allowed the Packers to keep the truck rolling, frustrating teams when they know they've called the correct play to finally slow down this high-powered offense, only to give up a chunk underneath. Rodgers is an expert at looking off defenders and knowing how to hold coverages with his eyes, and this translates well to the checkdown, where he can hold the dropping zones for half a beat, creating extra yards to be found in the flat. Marching to their third consecutive 13-3 season, the Packers have clinched the lone bye in the NFC, and at this point can afford to rest with reinforcements on the way. To us here at Thinking Football, this feels like the most complete team of the LeFleur era, with Aaron Rodgers' phenomenal play being backed by a strong ground game and an elite secondary. Will this finally be the year that Rodgers gets that extremely coveted second ring? Only three wins stand between the Green Bay Packers and their fifth Lombardi Trophy. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and check out our latest film studies on the league's youngest superstars, Jamar Chase and Micah Parsons.